yesterday when I went home, I was thinking about, I want to, maybe I, want, I will do the lightning talk, but I was not sure. This morning when I left here, I took the book just to think maybe I will do it. And this morning with the keynote speech, a lot of mentioning of the team topologies. And I can imagine that there were a lot of people in the room who were thinking, I don't know what team topology is. So I wrote my name on it. And during lunch, I just wrote some notes, no preparation at all. But it's not really true because, as he said, I, as he already mentioned, I, I am hopefully going to be a team topology advocate. So I have been working with this kind of stuff for a while. So I hope I know what I'm talking about. Uh, only ten minutes left. Only nine minutes left. So it's going to be a very short introduction, and it is just a few, just a little bit of a touch of team topologies to give you a little bit of an idea. So let me just start with a very common story for all of us. You are working with different teams, different projects, different domains, struggling to get your stuff in production. You have to discuss with other teams. You are always, your software is entangled. You are not really autonomous. You can't deliver your software in time. Feels like something is holding you back. Does that sound familiar to some people? Who recognizes that story? And uh, it has to do with, with a lot of things. It, it has to do with how you design your software, how you work together. It has to do with context switches. It has to do with cognitive load. So how many work are you doing in your teams? And I saw a lot of hands. And then the next question is, whom of you would like to know if there's a way to change this? Yeah, some people would be like, would be willing to have some kind of flow, right? Uh, team topologies, what I'm going to talk about is not a golden rule, is not the, the perfect way to do it, but it can really help to change your organization in a better way to get better flow. So what is team topologies? Anybody who really knows already what team topologies is? I know some people do. Who has heard of it but really doesn't know what it's about? Also, some hands. Nice. Who has never heard of team topologies before? Okay, nice. So that's like 30, 30, 30 percent, something like that, an equal split. Um, it's a practical model. It's it's not a framework. It's not really a, a, a as I said, a golden standard. It's a practical model for organizational structures. And I have something on the screen, hopefully. I'm not seeing it there, so look at my hand. What is team topologies in a very short way to explain? Team topologies says you only need four types of teams. You need stream aligned teams, the most important teams of your organization. They put the value in the market. That's where the money comes from, to say it a bit, a bit, little bit blunt. Um, but you can't put anything in production if you don't have some things around it, like a structure, like maybe you, you need Kubernetes, you need cloud structures, whatever you need. So you need a platform team to do that for you. And a platform team really makes APIs available, as I said, cloud logging, tracing, whatever you need for your teams to get things in production, that's what they do. Um, then you also have something like a complicated system team, or subsystem team, Teams you don't really want to have that much because they are expensive. They do difficult stuff like maybe machine learning, maybe graphical processing, stuff that you really need experts on and not really an ordinary team. And then there's a last part, last type of team, which is the enabling team. And an enabling team, the main goal of the enabling team is helping the streamlined teams to move forward. So like if you talk in Scrum term terminology, uh, if you have any impediment, call them and they will come and help you. Um, so that's the four teams. And they say, you don't need any more teams than this. And then the other thing is the way they communicate together. There are different ways of how you can communicate together. And um, if you can just look at the picture there, you have something which is X as a service. And X as a service is the most interesting way to communicate with, e with each other. What you do as a team, you work together and you say, okay, you have an API. We want to use your API. How can we communicate with each other? And then you move your own way and you can do your own autonomous thing. And that acts as a service is kind of your interaction way. So it's just very short way. You just come together, you go out, you do your own thing. 
The other one, collaboration. Uh, for example, you have a complicated subsystem team which does machine learning. And it's kind of an R&D way. And at the end, they finalize their processes and they say, okay, we have something that can do machine learning. You can come and connect to us. But it's a little bit complicated. So what you do is say, okay, we will work together for one week and then we are going into a collaboration mode. We will really sit together for one week. After that, we split up and then we go back to the access as a service. We know our own, each own interface. That's how we communicate. That's how we continue. And the last one is facilitating mode, which is what the enabling team does. Sometimes you see also see other teams, like you have a platform team that has maybe Kubernetes. They can help other teams using Kubernetes. But normally it's the enabling team that does the facilitating, coaching, uh, helping them with pipelines, with whatever they need. So that's what the different te teams and the different types are. Um, there are a lot of, of course, a lot of more things in the book. I think w the basic idea is what you want to do is you want to communicate in a specific way with each other. So you really look into, are we going to collaborate? Are we going to facilitate? Are we going to work as X as a service? And then you write it in your team API. Your team API is like a document about your team. This is our team. This is our team members. This is what we work on, and this is how you can work with us. Um, it is about, uh, as I said in the beginning, trying to get your cognitive load lower. That's one of the most important things, because all these context switches, you want autonomous teams with a low cognitive load so they can really get into their flow. And I guess... That's team topologies in eight minutes. But, you know, it sounds very simple, but it's not. Because when you start working like this and you, uh, you will very quickly see that, like when you have two teams with a lot of dependencies, you can say, okay, we are going to have X as a service, but that doesn't work. You need to work on it. You need to, so it will take a long time before you can start using, really using these principles but it really helps you getting a vision of how you want to work, how you want to split your organization, uh, start uh, talking with like your stakeholders, your business about, okay, what are the real streams? Where is the value in? What, what are, do the, does this team look like? And there is one more thing I wanted to say because we are on a domain-driven design event. So what does this have to do with domain-driven design? Many times you have a team which does a bounded context or maybe two bounded contexts or a subdomain, which is very handy if you have one team doing just one thing, just one bounded context, the other team will do the other one. So you have small teams doing their own thing and that's why, why team topology is very good works together with domain-driven design. And I think that was it.